season seven of catfish kicked off with a bang this is one of my favorite episodes ever because it is just so messy it's the first episode that we've covered over here on my channel with max still in it which is super exciting the duo of Neve and Max are actually in St. Louis, Missouri. Levante actually reached out to Catfish on behalf of his mom, and his mom's name is Shaquilla, and she has been in a lot of shitty relationships, according to him. But she has been really happy lately, now that she's been in an online relationship with a man named Tally. When Levante said that he wanted to meet Tally, she said that he's busy. Too busy to take my mom on a date? Come on! Levante has the energy that we need. So he told his mom to watch out, she told him to mind his business. Levante is sure that Shaquilla is being catfish, but she won't listen to him, so catfish's help is needed. Neve, Max, and Levante then hop on a little quick Skype, which Skype instead of Zoom, that's so crazy, it makes me feel super old. But we then find out that they have been talking for a long time and they have never met in person despite literally being in the same city for the majority of their relationship, and they've never video chatted either. She's never seen him? She's seen a picture, but they never video chatted or anything. It's all the makings of a catfish concoction right here. He allegedly recently relocated to Texas, which has made it more difficult for them to try to coordinate a meetup. Shaquilla then comes on the screen and says confidently that Tally is her boyfriend. I met him about a year ago. I met him on Vine, actually. I didn't even know you could meet people on Vine like that, but you know, to each their own. She says that they talk on the phone, so she knows that he is real and their relationship is real. Girl, girl, girl. Oh, girl. This girl Stop. is delusional. She says that she loves him and she has no doubt that he is who he says that he is and that he too loves her. She says that she completely trusts him because what is a relationship without trust? And just remember that she said that, okay? Just remember that she said that. We then head over to Shaquilla and Levante's house. You look taller on Skype. And Tally has told Shaquilla that he will take care of her that he will get her a better job, and since he believes in a woman being spoiled, that she'll be spoiled, which you've been together for a year. If you're talking about spoiling me and you're not spoiling me, you're never gonna do it. No tea, no shade, no pink lemonade. And Max is like, wow, this, he really sounds like some Superman, like he's gonna do everything and upgrade your life. She's like, yeah, mm-hmm. Be fucking for real. Girl. Levante says that Tally will just tell his mom whatever she wants to hear. And he says that he worries about her quite often, as she makes bad decisions and she is too trusting. He says that as the man of the house, it's his job to keep her and her men in check. And this is when we find out that basically all of Shaquilla's ex-boyfriends have gotten into fights with her son. He says that it's because they're disrespectful and she doesn't stand up for herself, so he does it for her. She says that, Yeah, I can agree on it. And this to me is wildly inappropriate. To expect your son to emotionally support you and stand up for you in the way that a partner would is ridiculous. That is not your man. That is your son. It's not his job to be the quote unquote man of the house. He is a child. Shaquilla then asks Neve to speak alone in the kitchen. It's like, oh my God, what are we about to find out right now? What are you about to tell him? But then we find out that she has in fact been lying to Tally and she is the catfish. I was texting him from a fake profile. She's been messaging him from a fake profile the entire time and she says that she isn't trying that hard to meet him and she hasn't tried that hard to meet him because she's the one who's lying. She then admits that her son has no idea. Neve says that she has to come clean. So she does and her son is like, So you catfishing him? I mean, yeah, pretty much. Pretty, pretty much. She then tells us that she's been going by a fake name, Carrie Taylor. She's been using a random photo of a black girl that she just found on Google and she uses a different voice when she talks to him. Hello? Hi, baby. She says that she is just so ready to come clean and she's hoping that he can look past all the lies. Neve then asks if she would accept him if he was also lying about who he was and she goes, I, I can't say that. Girl, what? Be fucking for real. Neve is like, um, so you can be dishonest, but he can't. That's crazy. She then says that he cannot be ugly. If he's not attractive, she can't accept that. And Neve goes, You feel he should immediately accept you. Is it? <laughs> exactly. So. This girl does not hear the hypocrisy coming out of her own mouth. This is a mess. Like I told you, it's a real messy episode. Max, I feel like this man has a sixth sense 90% of the time because he then says that he could be fake too and y'all could be catfishing each other. I know something you don't. I know something you will never know. So the next day, they get to investigating. 
they go to Tally's Facebook page and they scroll back a couple years and someone says, happy birthday, Donnell. Like the tag, but then when they roll over the tag, the profile that they're currently on comes up. So it's like, what's going on here? Someone else called him a different name just last year. They called him Darius. So the name has changed a couple times on the profile over the past few years. They then search the name that Shaquilla has of him and they find another Facebook page. It looks more legit because it has too legit, too legit, too grip. It looks more legit because it has more pictures of him and it has people interacting underneath the pictures. Some woman commented under a photo saying that she hopes he's in staying out of trouble. Say what now? Her name is Yaya, so they reach out to her and right away she calls them. They ask her what she knows about Tally and she says, we grew up together. What's his real name? No, his real name is Dark Tally. Which, what a name. That's something real special. But he's always gone by Tally. She says that he's been in and out of prison. Max's face crack is me. She thinks that both pages may in fact be his because he may have used one on the inside and is now using one now that he's back on the outside. So they tell her, thank you, hang up the phone. They then search his full government name now that they know it, and they find his varying mug shots. And when I say varying, I mean varying because there's more than like three. But they still have no idea if Shaquilla is talking to Dartalius or not. That name, it just sounds like, like it'd be like a Mozart, like a Beethoven, like a Dartalius. So they head back over to Shaquilla's to give her and her son an update. They fill her in on what they were able to figure out and also just let her know like the questions they still have, the things they still don't know. She tells them that she saw the birthday wishes with the different names, but thought nothing of it. Girl, at this point, this woman is being willfully ignorant because she knows that she's lying. So she doesn't want to push him too hard on anything that doesn't make sense on his end, because then she also has to come clean. Max then says, If he's lying about something, then your lie all of a sudden becomes less harmful. He's trying to be optimistic, kind of, sort of, in this whole situation. She says that if she is being catfished about the physical looks, she cannot accept that. So disrespectful! That shit got me so hot! Now who's gonna tell Miss Ma'am that it is so hypocritical and ridiculous to say this while you are actively lying about your name, what you look like, and your voice? Don't get me wrong, I don't think she's an ugly girl, but I don't understand what her hyperfixation is on what he looks like when she's also been lying about what she looks like. She says that she's just so shocked to find out that he's been in prison. He's like, he's never been in jail a day in his life. It's just so crazy to me that she's expecting this person to be completely honest and transparent with her when she has been lying about everything. The audacity. Max says that the good news is that it looks like she's talking to the same good looking guy. <laughs> Max actually kills me because he's just throwing her double standard back at her face so she could realize how ludicrous this entire thing is. Neve then steps out to give Tally a call. Tally claims that the profile has always been his, but an ex-girlfriend continually hacks him and changes the name on his page. That doesn't even make sense. If she's hacking you, why is she just changing your name? The friends you still have are still going to be your friends, even if she changes the name. But Neve doesn't push him too hard, he's just like, yeah, okay, whatever. He then tells us that there are a lot of things that Carrie doesn't know, which we know. But he does say that he has very serious feelings for her and he really wants to meet up. He does actually live in Texas and Neve tells him that they will be on their way to meet him real soon. Neve and Max get in the car, they head back to their hotel, and Neve says that it seems as if Tally is being truthful and honest. It doesn't, something feels off. So when they pull up to the hotel, Tally is there. And Neve is like, what the fuck are you doing here? Why are you here? We just spoke on the phone and you said that you're in San Antonio. Tally says we did not just talk on the phone and he only knew that they were there because of Yaya. He then tells them that he's not talking to anybody named Carrie and he only came down to the hotel to see them because he noticed that somebody was impersonating him and he wants to get to the bottom of it all, especially after hearing everything that Yaya told him. So they briefly fill him in on everything that's been going on, why they're down there, what they know, and he reiterates once again that he has not been in a relationship, an online relationship with anybody named Carrie Taylor. This then lets us know that Shaquilla has in fact been talking to the fake page. They have no idea who she's been talking to, and they have no idea who Neve just talked to on the phone. So they then call Shaquilla and fill her in on everything that just happened. And Max is smiling the entire time. It's almost like he's pleased that she's being catfished, which is killing me. That's why are you laughing? This is no laughing matter, sir. 
So the next day, they hop on a flight to San Antonio, and right after they get off the flight, they head over to meet Tally. I think that me personally, if I were on the show, I would hate this. I am supposed to meet the love of my life, the person I've been talking to for so long that I've been lying to, and I had to meet them without a shower. I don't get to freshen up. I just gotta go meet them looking oily, crusty, musty, and dusty, and smelling like the airplane? Ew. So they pull up to the house, Neve goes up and does his little cop thing, bangs on the door, peeks in the windows like always, and out walks Tally Chow. What? Shaquilla's face literally drops and she's like, nah. Oh my god! So it really turns! And everyone's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all know each other? And they go, yeah, we know each other because we used to date. Oh <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> She's like, this ain't right. You catfished me. And Neve is like, you catfished him too, though. And they're both just shocked. Neve says, this is destiny. With a big old smile on his face, like this is fate. Like he's the catfish fairy bringing people together. And they're both like, hell no. Ain't no way. We had a really bad relationship. And everyone's like, oh my God. Callie told her that he didn't have any kids. You told me you don't even have any kids. You have a lot of kids. Meanwhile, Terrence has four kids. And all those four kids he had on her. Like, they were together, and he went and cheated on her and had those four kids while they were still together. He was just a uh, H-O-E. Tally ho. There you go. Terrence says that he got the profile from a friend. And they all just kind of pass it around. They share it in order to catfish women which is crazy and sick and twisted. At this point, Shaquilla walks off to the car and she's really upset. Neve follows her and Max stays behind to talk to Terrence. Shaquilla tells Neve that she really loved him, but he treated her so badly. They were together damn near five years and they had plans to get married. So basically, her yearly anniversary present was finding out that her man had a baby on her. Electric chair. Someone needs to jump this man expeditiously because that's such a sinister thing to do. If you don't want to be with someone, just leave. But why continually cheat and then have babies on them? No, 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 no. She then says that all of the women he cheated on her with, he met online. So this is especially triggering for her. He also used to bring random women to her house to cheat on her in her own house, in her own bed. I just need men to not. I just need men to not. So we cut back to Max and Cheater Cheater Pumpkin Eater and he says that he's not interested in a relationship with Shaquilla and he says that if he knew that it was her this whole time, he would not have entertained the profile. And I'm sure she feels the exact same way. He admits that he did really love her but he really messed up their relationship. But then in the next breath he goes and says that she was crazy and things got really crazy and it was basically her fault. No ma'am. No ma'am. She started bleaching clothes, she started cutting up shoes, and just all that type of mess. And I personally would have done a lot worse than just cutting up some shoes and bleaching some clothes if the man that I was with, the man was telling me he loved me, he cared for me, had four babies on me. So he should consider himself lucky. But also I would never stay with someone after they had one baby on me. He also alleges that she was cheating on him. I mean, this time I came home and Shaquille was in the bed with another dude, drunk. I personally don't believe that. I just think that he was trying to shift the blame onto her so that he didn't seem like the bad guy. But it's like, you had four babies on her. Even if she did cheat on you once or twice, you are still the bad guy. But I don't think she did cheat. Max is having none of it though. And he reminds him like, you are the one who messed up their relationship. Having four kids on someone, you say that you love and you want to marry is crazy. Shaquilla then gets out of the car and she is silent. She just stares. Neve goes, okay. Bye. This was pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, but why would you say that out loud? So they then agree to link back up the following day, depending on how they feel. Neve and Rags say that nothing surprises them anymore, but this, this right here, it surprised them. The next day, Shaquilla says that she broke down because the way he spoke to and treated Carrie was not the way that he treated her at all. She questions why he would be like this to a person that he didn't even know. And Max is like, hey girl, he would say the exact same things about you. And Loki, I think Neve and Max were rooting for them to get back together because they somehow fell back in love and made their way to each other all these years. It's like the universe was telling them something. And I hate that. 
because why would you encourage this woman to get back with a man who treated her worse than dog shit stuck up under his shoe? No. This episode, I kind of wish Cammy was here instead of Max because Cammy would have never encouraged her to get back with this man. So then they head back to see Mr. Cheater himself, and once they're there, Shaquilla says that if he had been who Tally was, then they would have still been together. Like their relationship would have been solid. He says that he was just so young. So being young justifies you acting like a piece of shit? Oh, I didn't know. Let me try and claim that excuse for myself since I'm still young. Max asks them to tell each other what they like so much about one another, and they both end up coming to the conclusion that they can actually become more of who they pretended to be in order to make their next in real life relationships work. They both apologize to each other, but neither of them says sorry. Neither of them express what they're apologizing for. They just say, I can apologize. I apologize too. Am I the only one who's really weird about things like this? Like if someone says to me, I apologize, I'm going to be sat there hands on my lap, waiting for the actual apology. Because you saying I apologize and you saying I'm sorry or I apologize that I did this and this and this to you, they're very different things. But also this scene confirmed to me that Shaquilla did not actually cheat on Mr. Cheater Cheater Pumpkin Eater because he only brought up that false allegation when she wasn't around to defend herself, but he wouldn't bring it up to her face. So two months later, we get a little quick follow up and Shaquilla has got some braid bangs going on, which is interesting. It's really interesting. <laughs> she shares that her and Terrence have actually been talking every single day since they met up that time with Catfish. Hey, just calm it down here at these you know, hang out. I just don't know what's more disappointing. This woman and her braid banks, or the fact that she's taking back this man who treated her terribly for so many years and is a huge contributor to her obvious low self-esteem. It might be a tie. So Max and Neve then speak with Terrence and he confirms that they have been talking, they've been working on building back their friendship and that whenever she is ready for a relationship, she just needs to let him know and he'll be ready. So after he talked all that smack about, I don't wanna be with her, I would never be with her, blah, 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 y'all got to be together. This ending makes my ass itch because what are you talking about? What do you mean y'all are gonna be together? Ugh, that's so disgusting. But hey, if Shaquilla likes it, I still don't like it, but it works for her. This is literally one of the messiest episodes and I don't really see people talk about it that much even though it's really good. So if you've seen this episode, let me know in the comments. If you haven't seen this episode, also let me know in the comments. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you're aware of every single time I upload. And also if there's a specific catfish episode that you would like me to cover, then make sure to drop it down in the comments. I really think that I want to cover the Tony episode next because it's just such a classic. And I just, I want to talk about it. So if you want to see that, make sure to let me know. But again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.